rebuilding. A catastrophic failure, a new start. Physically, mentally, our careers, our businesses. Step back, first step, next step. The driver in me just wants to get it done tomorrow. We'll do this, do that, let's move this, where are we at with this? You build some confidence, build some self-esteem, start to feel better about yourself. The Silverback Blueprint Podcast, a show for men over 40. We focus on getting stronger, staying motivated, building discipline, creating a community, and becoming truly happy. Hey guys, welcome to episode 74 of the Silverback Blueprint Podcast. What's your guilty pleasure? You know, we all have that one thing, something that we really enjoy, and a few people would ever think that we're into that, right? Now, I'm not talking about, like, freaky shit or anything illegal. You know, Luke's getting ready to pull his wig out, and I'm like, no, no, it's not what I'm talking about. You know, consenting adults, you do whatever the fuck you want, you know, that kind of stuff. I mean, but I'm talking about, you know, what is the one thing that you, you kind of really are into that really is like a... I know it's just it's like a complete opposite of how you are normally or how people see you and stuff right you know the last few episodes we've covered some big things some important things some deep things and today i just want to change it up a bit and and have some fun and talk about a few different things that uh that are just it's good to have as an escape it's good to have that sort of it's so so different than what we're normally doing that it gives us a chance to unwind we talked earlier about you know stepping back or not taking ourselves so seriously and to me this is one of the things you know we have different hobbies and you know i used to play guitar a lot every once in a while i pick it up and stuff um you know we all have those those things but what's your what's your guilty pleasure what's that one thing that you know you're into or you think is really cool that you just you know, if you told someone, they'd be like, what? Holy shit, I didn't know that. You know, that kind of thing. For me, it's, uh, and a lot of people know about it now, but for a long time, a lot of people didn't realize it, but I'm, I'm really into the Bigfoot, you know, the Sam Squanches and stuff like that. Um, you know, and it's not a matter whether I believe in it or not. I believe in it. Um, it's really about just, it's something that's just out there. And for me, I like it because I like the stories, um, you know, and I also, what fascinates me about it is the, um, the human element, you know, the people that are into Bigfoot, like anything else, they're into it. People are into different things at different levels. Right. And then, you know, I, I'm, my personal favorite are the encounters where, you know, they're, they're just out doing something and something happened to them and they saw something or there was activity around them and stuff. And then that's it. They never see it again and never happens to them again. But, you know, they believe they saw something or they be- something happened or there's even physical proof. I, those are my favorite things. Now, the one, th- you know, the areas where I, you know, obviously I sit back and I raise an eyebrow is, is, you know, the guy or girl is like, oh, yeah, I feed Bigfoot every day. He comes to my house, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, uh, I don't believe any of that. But what I do admire is that these fuckers believe it. They're really into it. You know, I listen to different podcasts because, you know, you should be listening to podcasts. Um, And if you look at my podcast list of things that I subscribe to, there's a lot of self-help stuff. There's some business stuff, (laughs) but there's two or three channels on Bigfoot. And there's a couple of ones I really like because there's a couple of researcher guys that are really into it and they really believe in it and they're trying to find it and they're, you know, that kind of stuff. There's a couple of podcasts where they just let anybody come in and tell their story, no matter how fucking crazy and how stupid it is and stuff. Um, So I I just like all that about it, right? Um, I've got books on it. I've got a bunch of movies on it. I like a good campy Bigfoot horror movie. I like a good investigative Bigfoot movie and stuff. But, you know, and and this all goes back to when I was a kid. And uh, we all remember, again, if you're in your 40s and 50s, Leonard Nimoy. And uh, what the hell was that program they had? uh, Oh, now I'm going to draw a blank because, you know, I'm almost 50. Um, In Search Of. You know, and he did different topics. And I remember seeing the Bigfoot one. And I remember it scared the fucking shit out of me. Um, And then seeing the Patterson film, which is basically thought of today as the most authentic video ever capturing it and stuff. Um, You know, and I'm like, wow. So the part of me that's, you know, more logical and stuff, whatever little part there is there, you know, I, I, I think there can be, you know, a hominid creature that that's living in the forest. 
um, that we haven't seen. I mean, if you look at the, uh, and I, I don't believe it's everywhere. Like, you know, it's been cited in every province and every state and territory uh, in the U.S. with the exception of Hawaii. Um, I don't believe that there's something like that in Florida. I don't believe that there's something like that in the Midwest. I really believe it's more of a, a northern uh, um, northern Canada, northern U.S., Oregon, B.C., that kind of thing, northern Ontario, uh, where there's lots of bush. There's still lots of undiscovered land. There's lots of uh, food sources for it. There's lots of cover for it. I think there can. I, I, I think there is something, you know, um, you know, we found all kinds of other creatures that we thought were extinct or didn't exist. We find them all the time uh, in other parts of the world. The uh, thing. Um, so I, I think there's a definite like possibility scientifically and stuff. You know, he's definitely quoted as being the reigning hide and seek champion. Um, you know, everyone's trying to, you know, and, and then there's all these different things where, you know, oh, I believe he's from a different dimension and he can fade in and out of reality. And I'm like, I think you're fucking, you're fading in and out of reality if you believe that. Um, I, I think it's more of a, like a, there's an actual creature, there's an, an animal that's out there and stuff. Um, and it'd be really cool if there was, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think it'd be really cool if, if they do eventually find this, this thing and stuff. Um, but like I said, the other thing, I, and I just, and this goes back to just, you know, campfire stories and we like to be spooked and like, we'd be like to be scared. And we've all, most of us have been in the bush at one time or the other and it's quiet. And there's a lot of things happening in the bush that we don't see, we don't know. And we've all heard that one weird noise. You know, I grew up on the farm and we had some some land way up in the mountain, uh, you know, surrounded by trees and stuff. And I, I remember one time hearing something that I was pretty sure that I'd never would ever hear again. Like I, something something that was like my experience or whatever. I didn't see anything and stuff. But there was this weird noise that I'd never heard before, you know, after living in the country for 10 years and stuff. Um, and I'd go up in the bush a lot hunting and, and that kind of thing. So, you know, I, I'm no expert. I haven't taken down any fucking, you know, white elephants or anything like that. But I mean, I'd been around and that one day I was in the backfield and I turned the tractor off for something and I was, I heard this screaming that I'd never heard of before. So, you know, and who knows, maybe it was fucking a rabbit. I don't know, but I'd never heard a rabbit like that before, but I remember just how it felt right. And how freaky it was, you know, and that kind of stuff. So, you know, Part of it is the, maybe the thrill or the chill and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you know, I think it's really cool that we have that one or two things that we're into that are kind of really just a 90 degree turn from who we are and stuff like that. Because I think we do is we need to have that that break from our, our day to day stuff. I think we need to, you know, give our brain a break. I think we need to get excited about something different and be entertained about something different um, and, and just have some fun with something. You know, so at the end of the day, you know, I've got some books, I've got a, cu a couple of cool pictures. I got one picture someone sent me where it looks like there's something there because, you know, they knew I was into this and they'd found this picture. You know, it, it's, it's just kind of cool. It's a cool little hobby and stuff. Uh, you know, if it turns out there is one and it's found, I can be like, hey, motherfuckers, I was right. I told you. Um, and if it ends up, they just find some old guy with, you know, wooden things tied to his feet making footprints. I'm like, huh, that's just the way it is and stuff like that. Right. So I have fun with it. I think that's really the important thing. It's a chance for you to unplug and just, you know, have fun with something and, and chill and just, you know, wrap your brain around something different that isn't always about work, that isn't always about stress, that isn't always about, you know, I'm a big believer in goals and visions and working hard, but I think you also have to take a break from that, right? I think you also have to have fun with some stuff. I think you have to have other interests just to make you a little more interesting as well. You know, I, I, I try not to be, and I hope I'm not that guy where every time I talk to someone, it's always about uh, business and it's always about the brand and it's always about, you know, self-improvement. These are really cool subjects and they're very important to me and they're a big part of who I am and part of my ongoing um, journey, you know, super important. And I love hearing other people. That's why I love having the interviews and, you know, and I want to help people. I want people to hear a message and, and spark something in them and, and help them pivot and, and make a change in their life to, to become better for themselves. Like to me, that's really important. That's part of how I want to help people. That's part of how I want to leave my mark on the world. Um, but the same token, right? we got to have fun. we got to do stuff that, you know, just entertains us and that we enjoy, 
you know, and, and to me, that's my big thing. What is it for you? You know, I'd love to hear from some of you guys what you're into. What's the, you know, that, that guilty pleasure and stuff like that. You know, uh, maybe you like watching soap operas. Maybe you, you know, you're into sports cars and you're, you know, indie racing. What's the one where they just go on an oval and they just keep turning left? You know, I, I never know. Is that, what, what is that? Is that NASCAR? Yeah, that's NASCAR, right? So maybe you like going fast and turning left. I don't know. That's kind of cool. Right, that kind of stuff. But I always think it. I always find it interesting when I find that one thing out about someone that's just you know a, a complete opposite of what I thought they were into and stuff like that. And I think that's really sharp. I think it shows that we have more range and um, you know we have different interests and stuff like that. One of the things that I've always toyed with is because I enjoy the whole Bigfoot phenomenon and experience so much. I have a Bigfoot website. It's called a big about Bigfoot com, and I've done some work on it and stuff. Um, you know, and I've, I've got a t-shirt design and stuff. And I've always said, you know, down the line, I want to do some stuff with that kind of thing because I have fun with it. And I, I like reading anytime on Netflix or a new movie about Bigfoot comes up. I mean, even the whole family's like, Oh, here we go. You know, that kind of stuff. But I, I have fun with it. It's pretty cool. You know, um, I remember my son, he's in the other room right now. He'll remember this. Uh, what was that movie we listened to that watch that scared the shit out of you? The Lost Coast Tapes. And how old, you're 16 now, how old were you at the time? Probably 12? Is about 12, and my son Brayden, and we're watching it together, and there's a freaky ending at it that even caught me off guard. Fuck, it scared the shit right out of him. Like, lights on all the time, and it was really cool, right? Because I remember, you know, I had that same experience when I watched that In Search of with Leonard Nimoy about Bigfoot and stuff, right? And it was, it's just cool to have something that still frightens us to this day and scares us and make us make us wonder when we hear something you know happen in the dark and stuff like that right it's just it's kind of cool and, and i think that's part of our adrenaline and it goes back to you know hundreds and thousands of years ago when we shared stories by the campfire and stuff like that right we wanted to be scared we wanted to be frightened we wanted to be motivated and inspired we wanted to to hear the stories of battles and epic victories and monsters and and things like that and i don't think that's changed for us i mean that's why there's more movies now than ever there's more visual things than ever there's more stories than ever um and you know so many more platforms now that you can you know at 49 when i was 12 there was no internet right you had to read books and hope something came on one of the two channels that you could receive there was a good show that came on and stuff like that now you can jump onto the computer go to youtube and spend hours getting you know listening and watching you know all kinds of um content that other people have put up about anything so it's it's really cool, right? It's easy. I mean, how often have we turned around and said, I'm just going to check Facebook or YouTube, and 45 minutes later, we're still farting around, and we've gone way down one rabbit hole that we didn't even think we were going to go down to, right? Because we want to have our, we, we, we want to follow our interests, and we want to fill some voids, right? It's one of the things we were talking about earlier, you know, about stripping away all distractions and stuff. And one of the reasons why we have distractions in our lives too is because if not, we feel we have voids and we have, we want to always fill voids. It's natural that any void in nature gets filled with something, right? So it's to control that. But there's times where you need to have some planned voids. You need to have some of those times where you can sit there and have some fun and let your imagination run wild and, 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 and become that 12 year old kid again, where you're like, Oh my God, what about this? And stuff like that. Right. I think that's super important. We don't lose that entirely. I think that that's another thing that jades us and turns us into just crusty old fucking, you know, Grand Torino, Clint Eastwood guys. Right. So I think it's important that we don't go too far down the other end as well. We need to have that, that guilty, guilty little pleasure, that fun little thing, that little, you know, and that's one thing, you know, when I work with the silverbacks, uh, in the programs once a week we break a journal out we have a question and then they have to spend five minutes on and think about and write and share if they want at the end and one of the things I do bring up is what's a hobby or another passion that you've had that you got away from or you know what's an interest that you have that you'd like to spend more time and then the one thing I get them to do once they find it or write it down is I challenge them to start spending one hour a week doing it dedicate an hour a week where they go back to that pursuit. And part of that is truly just to, re, to, to have that other aspect in our lives and just to have some of that me time and that fun time, right? So at the end of the day, it's all about deciding how we're going to spend our time, how we're going to spend our energies. And I think we need to have a purposeful amount of it spent on things that just make us smile, things that interest us, things that take us away and escape from our day-to-day -day stuff. 
And I think what that does is actually charges up our energy system, gets us excited, gets the brain going, gets the endorphins going, and then we end up taking all that benefit and bringing it back into our normal day, right? I don't want it to be like, oh, you know, I, I, Monday to Friday, it's all about getting to the weekend. I don't want us to have that kind of quality of life either. And there's a lot of guys out there that are like that. You know, they, they'll even openly say it. Oh, this is just the job that pays the bills that gets me to Friday because then I truly live on Saturday and Sunday. I, I, you know, I get it. I understand why. But I mean, you know, Monday to Friday is a significant chunk of your life. So let's enjoy that more, you know. And then when we get to the weekend, we also have even more energy because we've had a good week and now we can have a great weekend. I think that's a great way to do it overall, right? But I think that's part of it. It's having that balance, you know, finding that fun thing that you like to do. You know, spend some time in it, that kind of thing. And, and you know, call it a hobby, call it a secret passion, call it a guilty pleasure. I think it's it's important and I think it can be a lot of fun and it can lighten the load a bit in your day and in your week and in your mind. And I think it's really cool. So listen, you know, if you don't have something, think back. Think about, about stuff you used to do that you used to have fun. It might be going as far back as when you were a kid collecting comic books or whatever it is, Right. But I think it's important to have that in our uh, that aspect in our lives and stuff, and then spend some time with it. Program some time into your week for it and stuff like that. You know, in the journaling, we talk about you know the the steps that we do in our rituals and stuff like that. And visualization is is, is one of them, right? And maybe that could be something that you spend some time on, right? And just lighten up a bit, have some fun with it, and uh, but don't run away with it. You know, come back to reality and. Uh, have that balance, guys. I think it's really, really important. Uh, if you've got any cool shit on Bigfoot, send it my way, kurthoss at gmail.com. Um, and uh, laugh at me or think it's cool or agree with me. It doesn't bother me. I don't give a shit about it because it's kind of my thing, right? That's the other cool thing about this is that it becomes your thing. Maybe you're into model trains. Who knows, right? Maybe you're into stamp collecting. You know, that's a, that's a pretty crazy fucking world. Stamp collecting, the licking, the pasting. I mean, listen, don't get me started. Anyway, guys. Head on over to iTunes. Leave me a five-star review. If you can, I'd love it. Head on over to the uh, hostilegear.com. Use code SILVERBACK to save 20% off whatever you want, um, including our new uh, Work Hard Motherfuckers banner. And uh, get that put up somewhere where it's, uh, it's important to you, your home gym, uh, your office, uh, your work. Start looking for another job once you put that up, maybe. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later.